through uh, how camp was and how the preparation was and, and how you're feeling, you know, now, now that the fight's finally here? Camp was super difficult. Um, I got pushed really hard. Uh, it's a little bit different when you're in a room with a stable full of great fighters. Um, every single role is hard. Every sparring session is hard. So um, it really tested my ability to adapt, my frustration level, um, pushed my conditioning. Um, it was really terrible when it was going on and really, really great now. I mean, been through a lot in your, in your sports career. I mean, yeah. So did it feel any particular kind of frustrating or, or different to you when, when, when those feelings were coming up that, that you were uh, having maybe difficulties that you hadn't experienced before? No, it's not that I hadn't experienced it before. Um, every time I'm preparing for a world championship, every, you know, preparing for the title fight, Olympics, that's exactly what I experienced. And so that's what I say, like, um, it was stressful, I had to overcome things, I had to push through fatigue, I had to push through, you know, like starting in bad positions, going against people who were heavier or stronger or faster or, you know, like every different type of way that I could be in the, in bad position and dogfight my way out of it, that's what it was. And um, while you're going through it, you know, like you just have to keep pushing yourself and pushing yourself and rallying, you know. Um, and it seems like it's never ending, you know? And like, and I was joking around, I was like, man, I was like, Uriah Faber is like freaking slave driver, you know? Like, and he was, he's like, I don't care, do more. I don't care, push harder. Okay, time to go. Okay, go faster. You know, nope, do it again, do it faster. And I'm like, oh, I just want to kick him. I just want to miss the pads one time, you know? But uh, no, like it, at the end, I was like, thank you. You know, like it's, that's the best times of training. That's the best time that I can come into a fight. So like now I know I get to reap the rewards of all of that work. So now I'm good. So, so when all is said and done, you get your hand raised on Saturday night, you go, man, this is why I did all that. This yeah. Myself through all that. Yeah, I said, my boyfriend's like, you're gonna love them. Once you go out there and you perform well and you win, you're gonna love them. I'm like, I'll hate them slightly less. <laughs> I'm like, no, but it is. It, so like, if I don't, I even told him, I'm like, if I don't look across, you know, while the practice is going on and wish I could just set my coach on fire, it's just, it's Something's not the not right, right camp. Right. Exactly, exactly. So, and that's what his job is. His jo job is to wring out every bit of, you know, talent and hard work and every bit of will inside of me and to push it to its maximum. And, and he did it. He did a great job. It's got to be if you're talking about, like, setting him on fire. That's pretty <laughs> I'm a little crazy. No, but... Um, but that is, that's, you just get so, you're, you're finding your breaking point and then you're pushing that point back. This is gonna be your 10th fight in the UFC. Does it feel like it's gone by really quickly? I mean, it's double yeah, digits. Yeah, I know. In that's a pretty short amount of time. Yeah, uh, yeah, it does seem kind of crazy. Like, I didn't, I didn't realize that, that it was my 10th fight. Um, it's awesome. I mean, how much <laughs> is this home to you? I mean, I mean, I'm sure in the first couple fights, like, this is, a new experience, but you were one of the first women signed to the UFC, and, and you know, I, I think right before Ronda's fight, right? Yeah. So, but in those first couple fights, it's different, and, and it's new to everybody, but yeah. this is just home, right? This is just what you do. No, it is, like, um, and even the last several fights, I've felt very comfortable in the octagon. I felt very comfortable with, like, the whole process. Like, I've, it just gotten very familiar to me. Um, and I think that goes a long way towards having better performances is the familiarity. Like I'm used to being in Vegas though, but don't get me wrong, I'm super happy to come back to the East Coast. Like I was like, ah, 500% humidity, this is home. <laughs> like, so, um, but anyway, seeing the same people and having Susie do makeup and you know, all of it, it's, it's just, you know, like, okay, time to go to work. So not a position you've been in for a little while, obviously needing to, to rebound, but mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about the experience from the past of, of needing to rebound from a loss and what that did this time around in terms of, you know, the mental preparation before a fight? So for me, um, it doesn't really change much. Uh, when I go back, even after I win, I'll go back and pick apart the things that I didn't did wrong, the things I didn't like. Um, so winning or losing doesn't have as much effect on the process because that competition is over and done. And I think I learned in wrestling how to quickly like just put everything behind me and focus on what I need to do to improve. So even if I go out there, like I, I never ever have a perfect fight. It doesn't matter how short it is, 
something I didn't do like I expected to do or wanted to do, and I have work to do. So it's just, it's the same thing for me. Before, uh, before the last one, you had a nice little run going. Were you starting to feel that momentum building up again and, and starting to push toward that title contention? Yeah, I was. And even, and there was talks about it too. And, um, you know, it's, it sucks to have like a little blip, you know, in there. Um, but I have full confidence that I'll be exactly back on track. You know, like the, the first round of that fight went how I wanted and, and the second round didn't, you know, and that sucks. But it's very different than going in there and having a sour performance. Making a mistake is different than having a full bad performance. And even that you can rebound from, but you know, when you go out there and you look back at the tape and you see a lot of things that you did right and things that you need to improve, um, you know, you, you realize you're, you're a millimeter off, you're two millimeters off, you're not inches off and you're definitely not miles off. Yeah. Uh, talk about getting the call for, uh, for Marion and kind of what your thoughts were on her as an opponent when, when, when they called you with her name. You know, I was pretty happy to get that call. Um, you know, they had different a different opponent lined up, and you know, because she hadn't fought in the UFC at that point, you know, she wasn't ranked. And I just was I expressed to my manager, I'm like, I want someone higher ranked. I want someone, you know, um, more with like what Marion has to offer or Marion. Um, I know she gets upset that people slaughter her name, so. <laughs> um, and it, you know, like. So I'm, I, they gave me what I asked for, you know, like, and it, uh, unfortunately it came because, you know, Tanya s suffered an injury, but that's just a part of our sport, you know. Um, she's unbeaten in her last three, and I guess and then the, the loss that she had before that was fairly debatable. I mean, have you gone back and, and looked at her past few fights, and, and is that something that you do? Do you go back and, and pick apart things and look at film? Or, or oh, no, 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 I, I do it myself too, um, because every person's going to see different things, and you know, like my striking coach might see different striking op op opportunities and openings, and but I'm ultimately the one that has to get out there. So I really do have to see, okay, these are the areas that I need to capitalize, and okay, these are the areas I need to neutralize, and you know, like have my own ideas because I, it's just important to me. I, I couldn't go in there; I, it would feel like I was going in there a little bit blind, and, and that comes from wrestling too. Like I. I always scouted my opponents if there was video on any wrestler. You want to see what their go-to stuff is and their best stuff is. You want to see, you know, where they struggle, where other people have been able to, like, you know, capitalize and gain momentum against them. Sure. Uh, talk to me a little bit about the kind of the state of the division right now because things seem like they're <clears throat> maybe still a little bit in flux. We don't know who Amanda's going to fight next, and maybe she's still going to fight Cyborg in the summer, whatever winds up happening. But is the timing right for you to be able to go on this this other this new run right now and then build yourself back up in kind of the perfect amount of amount of time to to get that next title shot? So I think so. Um, the only problem is like with me, um, I I really don't want to look too far ahead. Uh, what I need to do is go in there and do what I do best. I got need to go in there and dominate and perform really well. And then the chips will fall where they may, you know, like I don't make those decisions. And it's not like, um, it's not like a tournament style where I know if I win this, I'm in the finals, you know? And so, um, focusing on those things that are beyond my control, like they've just led to frustration and, you know, going down rabbit holes in the past. And so I'm just, you know, if I go out there and I fight it my to the best of my ability, then I, I believe that that's what it'll, it'll do. Um, but it's not my choice. So, does the fact that the, that those rabbit holes are so unpredictable, particularly in your division, kind of help with that? I mean, Ronda's well, gone, Misha's gone. You know, these things are seem to be forever changing in in your division. Yeah, and so for me, like, I'm not the mastermind behind it, so I don't really see, like, a particular rhyme or reason. Sometimes I think people get title shots in any of the divisions, and I, I can see why they made that matchup and why they brought that person along. And then other times I'm like, wait a minute, what? Like, so really I don't know, you know, like, even when I fought Ronda, I was undefeated and, you know, I'm an Olympic medalist and things like that, and that made sense. But I'd only had one fight in the UFC, you know, so like I didn't know, I wasn't sure exactly what I did to, you know, have the title shot, except I mean, I did have an undefeated record and things like that. So I can, I can understand that. But sometimes, yeah, 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 exactly. But I didn't know why that time, why that show, why, you know, like, 
and if it was something I did or if it was just because the Olympics happened to be on and so Olympian versus Olympian while the Olympics are on is you know that might have been it but I really think that um I don't, I'm not I don't try to meddle in that anyways too much because I'm a fighter I'm not a business person I don't know what it takes to run an organization like this and it's sports entertainment so um I just try to be the best fighter I can um I hope that translate you know, translates into being entertaining also because it's to my benefit. But ultimately, I want to go out there and perf- put on performances that I'm proud of and that I'm fighting to the best of my ability. That's my main concern. What do you think that looks like on Saturday night if you're putting on that type of performance you're going to be excited about? For me, um, so th- I'm really more focusing on process rather than outcome, and it is – Every single scramble, every single exchange, I win them, every one of them, you know? And so, like, it doesn't matter what I have to do and how deep I have to dig or what I have to pull out of myself to get it. I don't stop until I've won that exchange. And ultimately, after you win as many exchanges, you win the fight.